We've got a couple more hours and then some work groups. So thank you all for, for being here with us this morning and for rejoining us this afternoon. Um, I'm Karen DeSalvo, which I bet I forgot to introduce myself this morning. I'm the National Coordinator for Health IT. I have a habit of that. It is um, really my distinct uh, pleasure and honor to get to introduce the Honorable Congressman Michael Burgess, who is a fellow Texan and um, has uh, been, he had practiced medicine in North Te Texas as an OBGYN for three decades and then uh, came to serve the country as a congressman in 2003. Uh, in that role, he's had uh, some leadership positions of note, one of which is that he co-chairs the Congressional Health Caucus, which he helped to found or founded in 2009. And he is also uh, on the Energy and Commerce Committee, serving both uh, on the as the Vice Chairman of the Subcommittee on Health and uh, the Oversight and Investigations Committee, which is um, one of the ways which I got to know him after Katrina was them uh, trying to think through ways that they could uh, help make a sustainable health care infrastructure in the uh, New Orleans and Louisiana community. He has his MD from University of Texas, Med Texas Medical School and did his residency at Parkland. And I'm going to now turn it over to Dr. Burgess and thank him again for joining us today. I appreciate his partnership. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. DeSalva. I really do appreciate the invitation. This looks like you've got a great group assembled this afternoon. Uh, thank you for mention, mentioning the Congressional Health Caucus. We actually had Dr. Moshe Sherry there twice to talk to us, so I look forward to, uh, to having you come uh, visit with members uh, in a, in a non-threatening setting sometime. And then, of course, we'll get to see you in committee, I'm sure, at some point, which is always threatening. But thank you for letting me spend some time with you. I know you're looking at that thing and saying, wait a minute, a Republican from Texas? I wonder who canceled on Dr. DeSalvo at the last minute <laughs> that she had to fill in. Um, let me just tell you that my relationship with, with health IT has not always been smooth. Um, I can remember back in 1989, I was with a multi-specialty group. We were perhaps ahead of our time there in North Texas, and our group bought a mainframe computer. Now, if you remember Texas in the late 80s, we were hit with something that was called the savings and loan scandal, so our economy tanked, and medical practices had a hard time making a go of it, and this mainframe computer ate up greater and greater amounts of overhead until the multi-specialty group actually went away because of the mainframe computer. So I was done with computers and medicine, uh, and never, never gonna go down that road again. I was in, uh, in solo practice in ob -GYN, didn't need a computer. And then doggone it, wouldn't you know, Congress passed this thing called the kennedy Casabon bill in 1996. Some of you are old enough to remember that. kennedy Casabon, of course, gave us HSAs, which was great. Uh, gave us HIPAA, which, uh, not so great. But it also required, one of the pay-fors for the kennedy Casabon bill was that anyone who filed a claim on Medicare had to file it electronically. So I had to go back and buy another computer. But now I can buy a desktop, and uh, much less cost than a mainframe, and certainly much more manageable. But then Y2K was right on the horizon, and all these desktops that you have in your medical offices, they're all going to implode on January 1st. Remember, Congress said you have to get another computer. So we went out and bought another computer. And really, just before I, I left practice, to, after I had won a, a race for Congress, people were talking about now you're going to have to get some type of electronic health record, a computer that can actually not just do billing and data entry, but you can actually do patient care on it. So certainly along the way, I've had uh, a, a sort of a love-hate relationship with health IT. But Karen mentioned uh, 2005, and of course Katrina happened uh, uh, it just after or just before Labor Day of 2005, and with the Energy and Commerce Committee going down to New Orleans after that was over, here's the uh, medical records department at Charity Hospital. I think that was in January of, of 2006. Uh, it, the the Corps of Engineers had dewatered the city. I didn't even know dewatered was a verb. So the Corps of Engineers had dewatered the city, and that's what you had left. And it almost looks like there's smoke damage, but the dark stuff you see on the paper records is black mold. And you really, <clears throat> I found out later, you weren't supposed to be in there without a hazmat suit. I did not have a hazmat suit, so I don't know why they said a Republican member of Congress had it <laughs> to take a picture, but I've carried it with me ever since. But contrast that. 
at, at the Reunion Arena, which was um, where the Mavericks used to play basketball right after the storm, and they brought people uh, up to Dallas because they, they could no longer be cared for in the Superdome in New Orleans, and you remember that story. But the, and, and to credit to the Dallas County Medical Society, the call went out on Labor Day weekend, we're gonna need a lot of doctors to help us take care of a lot of people who are arriving here. And, uh, and, and Doc showed up. And one of the things they also learned that uh, one of the chain drugstores brought uh, their a trailer up. And if someone had gotten their meds at this particular chain drugstore down in New Orleans, they actually could get their medication list printed out. And I mean, you know, if you've got uh, a sort of a partial history that a patient can give you, a medication list that a, that a drugstore can give you, that's, uh, you've got a pretty good chance now of uh, being able to, to put together that patient's medical history. So I changed my opinion on electronic health records after witnessing this uh, event of biblical proportions. Now, still, uh, as you go through the next several years in Congress, of course, the Committee on Energy and Commerce still tried to, to work on, uh, on, on things related to health IT. Um, things like privacy always seemed to be sticking points. Obviously, funding was always difficult. And uh, the regulatory side, the Stark Laws, made it difficult to, for a, a, a hospital and a physician office to actually interact. But then in 2009, here comes a stimulus, and all the money goes into it, and the High Tech Act is sort of incorporated in, and now we're all, we're all to a place where everything's working well, and everything, the funding's okay, right? And no, really no problems, except when I go around the country, I do hear from hospitals, and I hear from doctors, and I hear from patients where the problems are still there. Now, we uh, are coming up on just the anniversary of the government shutdown, and Dr. Mashashari left right about the time we shut the government down. I don't know what the problem was there, but anyway, I visited with him right, right before he left. And he said, whatever you do, don't delay meaningful use. But, okay, meaningful use got delayed that fall, and it got delayed again. There are, you know, it, it, there are some punitive aspects on the meaningful use side that actually have some people fearful of that they cannot get to where they need to be in the time involved. On the other hand, and, and I think Karen said it so well this morning about, uh, about the interoperability. It's important that patients have access to the information when and where they need it. Well, that's interoperability, isn't it? The patient comes to a clinic, and even though they've been to a clinic across town or a hospital across the country, that was what the chain drugstore showed us in the parking lot of Reunion Arena, that, that ability to retrieve data real time when the patient needs it. And that's where interoperability comes into play. So I don't know if perhaps uh, the focus being on meaningful use originally, maybe that focus should have been on interoperability and the meaningful use could have come later. But nevertheless, we are where we are and the committee will continue to try to for one thing, make it so that the impact on the practicing physician and the, and the operating hospital is manageable and at the same time, and, and make no mistake, I mean, I didn't vote for the darn stimulus and I wouldn't vote for it again today, but make the, the money that the taxpayer has put forward, it does need to be well spent and it is our obligation on the committee as part of the oversight function of the committee to make certain that that, uh, that taxpayer dollar is well spent. Well, you stop just for a minute and kind of look, try to look over the horizon. What's, what's the future hold? One of the things that's really exciting on the Committee of Energy and Commerce right now is we are looking at uh, what's called the 21st Century Cures Initiative. And as a consequence, it's not just drug development. It's how drug gets into the, into the, through the regulatory process and into the stream of co uh, commerce. But it also is looking at the vast amounts of information that have to be now processed that's in the healthcare space. So I'm just sitting at home in Texas this weekend and opening and reading my Fort Worth Star Telegram, and here's the lead article in the business section. A sea of federal red tape descends into Silicon Valley. Um, and it outlines here the difficulties that Google has had with uh, federal regulatory agencies in the healthcare space. Here's a quote from the Google co-founder. It's just a painful business to be in. Well, that's right, welcome to my world. Further in here, it, uh, it says that there are 24,000 health-related apps available now on your cell phone. I think that number's probably low. I think it's probably more like 90,000. But it, later in the article, it goes on to say how the FDA has approved 40 in the last two years, which gives you an idea of the scale, the mismatch, 
of what people are entrepreneurs, what scientists, what developers are doing, and then what's happening on the regulatory side. So it is something that is going to require a great deal of care because if, if we're not careful, the ability to deliver on that promise, that promise of 21st century healthcare, uh, that will be lost in the, by, by being ground down in the, in the regulatory process. I'm always struck, you know, Google has a, a, a relationship or a partnership with uh, a genomic sequencing outfit called 23andMe. I mean, in the interest of full disclosure, I sent my sample in and I got sequenced, and it's pretty neat. You find out a lot of information. Some of it's accurate, some of it may not be. But nevertheless, you find out a lot of information, and then they could ask you to continue to share information. And first it's a pain in the neck, and then, you know, you go on and you log on, and uh, they ask a series of questions, and okay, well, let's see what the next series is. That one wasn't too hard, didn't take too long. They're compiling in a phenomenal amount of information on a lot of people who are willing to share their information. I mean, I did not really worry about privacy as much on this as I might somewhere else. This is something that I'm doing voluntarily and willingly, and at the same time recognizing that perhaps this is going to be helpful, not necessarily to me, but perhaps to a generation subsequent or a generation after that. So this compiling of large amounts of data on a voluntary basis, perhaps there's something there that the federal government could learn from because they seem to have found a way to do it. They seem to have done it, found a way to do it that is unobtrusive uh, up until October, November of last year when they got afoul of the FDA. But they're going to work through that and, uh, and everyone will be happy again. This is an enormously important aspect, whatever happens next in medicine, and it's impossible for anyone to know, but I do know this. I know that young people who are again going into medicine today, they're going to have tools at their disposal to alleviate human suffering that no generation of doctors has ever known in the past. That's an enormously powerful concept going forward. There's many ways where Congress and the administration have screwed up the policy side, but I've got a lot of faith. They're very young, they have fast computers, and I am depending upon them to get it all straightened out. Karen, thank you very much for letting me be with you today. Thank you, Congressman Burgess. Really appreciate you taking the time to be here today and to give us some remarks. Kicking off our, our afternoon.